All right, ladies and gentlemen, Warzone Season 5 mid-season patch notes has released. This is going to be the final major update for Call of Duty Warzone. As it says right here, let me zoom in so everyone can see properly. Hopefully the camera won't go much in the way. Let's put it down there. That should be better. Nice. So as they say, so here it is, the final major update for this era of Call of Duty Warzone. We wanted to take a moment to thank our players for joining us on this journey. We have learned so much this year and have come such a long way together since we launched the Pacific Chapter in December of last year. We've seen a 1940s war-torn Pacific Island, a reimagined and reinforced version of Rebirth Island, two movie giants, Kong and Godzilla, descend upon Caldera, the arrival of mercenaries and with them Fortune's Keep, a new map experience all before the Terminators took over, leading into the eruptions at peak. We have also seen a wealth of major new weapons and features including the fighter and bomber planes, lootable perks, gulag and redeploy tokens, redeployed balloons, a new fast travel system, portable buy stations, the decontamination station, along with a number of new contracts, public events and limited time modes. But perhaps where we are left most proud is with our team's work that has gone into quality of life improvements and our focus on reducing points of friction in the core gameplay. Play loop. That said, we aren't finished quite yet as we detail the final set of improvements further below. We hope this transparent push for changes, big and small, has been well received and helped craft the game experience you want to play. We hope you enjoy the mid-season update and we'll be seeing you very soon in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Very, very excited. Stay frosty indeed. So of course, to start off with, we got the playlist update right here. Week of September 28th, week of October 6th, week of October 13th, and then the week of October 20th and you can see it right here if I just scroll down a little bit there you go you can see the entire thing right here now when it comes to modes greatest hits of the year to see out the season we're excited to be bringing back a wealth of classics and fan favorite game modes but first some ground rules playlist rotations will occur once per week a variant of plunder will be available every week Fortune's Keeper Rebirth Island will also be present every week with only the squad sizes rotating so you'll be able to play Fortune's Keep and Rebirth Island at all times however However, the squad sizes will be rotating. There will be a focus in prioritizing Fortune's Keep for all squad sizes to best support those practicing for the upcoming CDL tournament. We will also be improving support for our solo players with a wealth of a variety to offer. We heard from our solo community that they felt underserviced in terms of solo game modes, so wanted to better expand their availability and choice of squad size. Battle Royale solos will cycle through different variants each week. Buyback solos, Battle Royale solos, Champion of Caldera solos. Very exciting for one that play a lot of solos, I like this. Fortune's Keep at Rebirth Island will always have Resurgence solos available on both maps at the same time. That's amazing. Big plus. Regarding the greatest hits LTNs, players can expect to enjoy the following appearing in rotation throughout the remainder of the season as we move away from daily rotations and back to weekly rotations. Rebirth Blood Money and Rebirth Payload. Ooh, I'm excited for I really love I really love the payload uh, game mode. On Caldera will have Iron Trials, Resurgence, Pl Golden Plunder, Clash, Champion of Caldera, Battle Royale, Buybacks, and Sticks and Stones. Be sure to also keep an eye out for a surprise or two in the coming weeks as well. Ooh. Ooh, okay. CDL Fortunes Keep Researchers Trios. We're excited to support the upcoming Fortunes Keep Researchers Trios CDL tournament. We will always have Fortunes Keep Trios in the active playlist to offer a place for players to practice for the 100k dollars tournament. Unfortunately, due to an ongoing issue with private matches, we do not expect Fortunes Keep to be available in private matches. So I guess that's a thing to note. Caldera Mini Royale. As part of our greatest hits outro, we're bringing Mini Royale to Caldera, to Caldera for the first time. This high intensity, high time to action mode will be perfect note to end the season on. That I'm excited for. Researcher Supreme is what the team at Beanox consider the perfect version of the fan favorite Rebirth Resurgence modes with all new rules. We've increased the tension. The Resurgence countdown is a little longer. Players have a slight increase of core health to 200 HP. Getting an elimination now shows enemy squad locations as ping on the minimap for a longer period of time. Players now have more control over the resurgence countdown, actions now reduce the countdown twice as fast. Eventually a squad mate will greatly reduce the, time the countdown. We've crafted supreme weapons. The ground loot brings back even more fan favorite weapons. The lowest rarity is epic. Players will deploy with iconic and powerful weapons. All weapons will 
have the most legendary skins that Warzone has to offer. We hope this mode will be a fun and challenging experience for everyone, as having a load loadout isn't as important as it normally is. May the best team win, indeed. All right, now for the general stuff, a message from Butcher. With the final season five update comes a new cinematic outro from Butcher when you load into Warzone. I've seen it, so I don't think I'll be able to bring it back on screen, unfortunately, but it's a good one. Warzone stories, calling cards as we conclude season five, we want to reflect and immortalize a few fun stories that have had the community talking. The following calling cards are available for everyone for free from day one as a thank you for th to the community for sharing in these fun and memorable moments. Warzone stories, King Growl, the meta of all metas, the Growl 5.56 Modern Warfare is one of the all-time great weapons. Let's celebrate its legacy as the true AR king that shall not be forgotten or dethroned. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Warzone Stories, Cracked Meta, a meta remembered for varying reasons <clears throat> is the Cracked <laughs> DRM DMR14 from the second year of Warzone. Oh dear. Warzone stories. Eagle Child. We loved this Reddit story. Whether you think it's Eagle Challenge or Eagle Child, we want you to feel represented either way. We got Warzone stories. Big Fish. Pest control and swap seat snipe. Now we are coming to the juicy stuff, which is the gameplay updates. Starting off with loadout cost reduction, and this is an interesting feature. Similar to Titanium Trials, loadout drop markers in the buy section will now cost $500 less per circle. So in circle one, it will be $10,000 as it's been before. Then in circle two, it'll be 9.5K, circle three, 9K, circle four, 8.5K, and so on and so forth. Now ATMs will now appear in Battle Royale. Now Gulag tokens and redeploy tokens has doubled the spawn rate in legendary supply boxes and slightly increased spawn rate in regular supply boxes. Now some quality of life stuff in the QOL updates. Recommended weapons. Increase the number of players that will see recommended weapons appear in the gunsmith. Weapons from Modern Warfare 2019 and Black Ops Cold War will also show as recommended if they are meta relevant. This is something that I really appreciate. Because before, whenever an update came out, I was like, oh dear, what's the meta now? And I had to go on YouTube or something and search and see what people said. But with this, Call of Duty is kind of hinting you towards, hey, this is really good, this is good, and we'd recommend this weapon for you. So I really love this feature. And I played Warzone yesterday, I don't know when this video is going out, but the FFAR from the Cold War is actually recommended, at least to me. And I played with that gun a lot in Verdansk. And I might have to do a video with that, because that brings back some memories. Golden Keycard Bunkers will now have a yellow circle highlighted on the tech map. The manual gas mask improved manual gas mask text in the settings menu to better detail how players manually equip the gas mask. I appreciate that, actually. Move the gas mask to be the first entry in the quick editor for easier manual equipping. That's a nice feature right there. Supply box UAVs will no longer show red, rebirth, supply boxes. Now for ground loot perks, text will be displayed on the UI when a perk is acquired via ground loot. Scavenger pouches will now drop at guaranteed $1,000 on, en on enemy elimination. Now for field upgrades, we got the portable decontamination station. Duration has been increased to 20 seconds off from 13 seconds. Now the weapons, which I'm very excited for. As a celebration of the breadth of weapons we have to offer, we're taking the opportunity with Season 5 mid-season update to really highlight all that's been added these last few years. You'll find a whole new ground loot and gulag loadout experience along with some targeted hits to the most performant builds in the game along with one last round of adjustments for the most underused weapons. Now as general under the weapons category, ground loot and gulag loadouts refreshed. Leaning into the history of Warzone, you'll find some of the greatest hits from Modern Warfare, Black Ops and Vanguard in ground loot. We have significantly increased the variance on offer from what was previously on offer in order to make the early game feel more dyna dynamic each drop. Now we got some new weapons this update. We got the BP-50, which is an assault rifle from, Van from Vanguard. This fully automatic bow pump assault rifle boasts a high fire rate while remaining deadly and accurate at long range. And then we got the Liana 57 light machine gun, also from Vanguard. It's capable of high accuracy during sustained fire at short to medium ranges. Now we got a bunch of weapon adjustments here, including things from Modern Warfare and also Cold War. So starting from the top here, the CR-56 AMAX, 
the max damage range has been increased and the upper total damage multiplier has also been increased. The Assault Rifle Hotel from Vanguard, the neck damage has been decreased and the lower total damage multiplier has also been decreased. Assault Rifle Charlie from Modern Warfare, neck damage multiplier has been increased. The QBC 83 from Cold War, headshot damage multiplier has been increased and neck damage multiplier also increased. The Odin from Modern Warfare, muscle velocity has been increased and upper arm damage multiplier increased. The EX-1 from Vanguard, which we just got recently, minimum damage increased to 11 from 10, and ADS spread has been decreased, very nice. And then we got a bunch of different attachments that has been given some changes as well, you can read those right there. If I read every single detail, it's just gonna make this video go like 45 minutes or so. <laughs> Assault Rifle Bravo from Vanguard, Auto Burst Fire now enabled, and Rate of Fire Time has been decreased, and we got some more attachment details right here. I guess I actually go ahead and zoom in a little bit, that might be make it a little bit easier to see. The EM2 from Cold War, Headshot multiplier has been increased and minimum damage has been increased as well. Now one of my favorite weapons in Call of Duty Warzone history is the FFAR. I loved this weapon. At one point in Verdansk, it, it was it was the top and it was shredding. FFAR muscle velocity has been increased, ADS movement speed scale increased and ADS transition in time decreased as well. And right here for this specific attachment, ADS movement speed while firing has now been increased as well. So if you enjoyed using the FFAR during the dance, this might be a good time to try it out one last time. The Volkstum, the Volk, the Volk, uh, ADS movement speed scaler has been decreased. Now for the shotgun, we got the iron hide from Cold War. Mid one pellet damage increased, mid two pellet damage increased, and minimum pellet damage has been increased. Some attachment details right there. The combat shotgun from Vanguard. Rechamber time decreased, and we got some details for the slug rounds. Shotgun Bravo from Cold War. Mid one pellet damage increase, damage increase, damage increase. ADS transition time decreased, ADS transition out time decreased, movement speed scaler increased. Some more attachment details right there. The street sweeper from Cold War. I've been, I've been killed, I've been killed by this. Damage increase, a damage increase. Yeah, I felt that personally. Now for the submachine gun section, we got the armor gear. Headshot damage multiplier has been decreased. Neck damage multiplier decreased, and ADS movement speed scaler decreased as well. We got some attachment details right here. The bullfrog from Cold War lower arm damage multiplier has been increased, and hand damage multiplier has been increased. The RA225, which we just recently got as well, the neck damage multiplier decreased, and some more specifics to attachments right there. The Blixen lower torso damage multiplier has been decreased. The ISO from Modern Warfare neck damage multiplier increased. Sprint of fire time increased. The CX-9 from Modern Warfare damage multiplier increased. Neck damage multiplier increased. Sprint of fire speed increased. KSP-45 Cold War auto burst fire now enabled. And lower extremities damage multiplier has been decreased as well. Now some details about a single attachment for the shop submachine gun Charlie from Vanguard, PPS-8 from Vanguard, minimum damage decreased to 18 from 19, upper leg damage multiplier decreased as well, some attachment details here as well, all the way down here. Light machine guns, we got the UGM-8, minimum damage decreased, Headshot damage multiplier decreased, neck damage multiplier decreased, recoil intensity increased. Some attachment details here. Maximus rifles, we got crossbow from Modern Warfare. Upper extremities damage multiplier has been increased, and lower total damage multiplier increased as well. The M1 Garand from Vanguard, minimum damage decreased, and some details for the hard scope. Sniper rifles, sniper rifle Charlie from Modern Warfare, bullet drop off decreased, and muscle velocity increased. Sniper rifle Alpha from Modern Warfare, max damage rage increased, max damage increased, and minimum damage increase as well. Upper torso damage multiplier has been decreased. The right tag AMR from Modern Warfare Zone can now one shot down to the head at all ranges. Minimum damage increased and headshot damage multiplier increased. And some attachment specifications. The Pellington from Cold War ADS transition in time decreased. ADS transition out time decreased. Neck damage multiply increased, upper torso damage multiply increased and lower torso damage multiply increased as well. I might be trying the Pellington because uh, this Seems pretty good. Now the anti-tank rifle from Vanguard. Bullet drop off increased and fire rate decreased as well. And some attachment specifics right here all the way down here. Tactical rifles, we got the Klauser from Vanguard. Now in tactical rifles, we got the Klauser here and we got a bunch of specifications here. Uh, for, the for some attachments here. Launchers, the Joker from Modern Warfare, mid damage has been increased as well. And the launcher Alpha from Cold War, 
mid damage increased and mid damage radius increased as well. To sum it up, basically it looks like a bunch of the Vanguard weapons that has been in the meta, like the Blixen and whatnot, has been take it down a little bit, take it down a notch, but then they have brought in a bunch of weapons from Modern Warfare and Cold War as well. I guess for us to experience some of our favorites throughout the years from the dance till now, one last time before we move on to Warzone 2, it makes sense and I'm excited for it. Now we got a bunch of different attachment specifications that I'm not actually going to go ahead and read out loud, but you can take a look at this if you wish. I'm just gonna let this scroll down slow and steadily until we reach the bug fixes here and then we got a variety of bug fixes right here and then that is it for the mid season update ladies and gentlemen this is potentially going to be the final update that we get in warzone before moving over to warzone 2. i'm gonna try and do some videos on on some of these things if i can i do have a bunch of footage from the modern warfare 2 open beta that i want to release and i also have another series planned that is in the works that i am hoping to be releasing fairly soon as well so if you're excited to get to receive any of this content be sure to subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss any of it i'll be live streaming as well so make sure you don't miss that so if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful be sure to leave it a like and comment down below if you're excited to see some of these modern warfare and and cold war i guess metas or really good weapons being brought back one last time before we leave warzone 1 to move over to warzone 2 let me know down below. But guys, that's going to be it. Hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. I'll see you on the battlefield. Have a wonderful day and until next time, goodbye.